uh, the, in the gypsy jazz stylings, which is more swing music. And if you notice, I'm kind of sticking to songs that use, that have two bar phrases before, like the, I call it the harmonic rhythm, yeah. the template kind of minor swing, dark eyes, in this case, bassa dorado, um, two bar or exactly like you, you could simplify to two bar phrases. And I think that's actually very important in concept so you don't have to worry. Even if you see a quick change, you could just think two bars instead of uh, you know one to the five, just think the five chord. Into arpeggios today, and that's why I sent out another worksheet. But I wanna review uh, what I was, what I am calling the easy arpeggio studies. Uh, sometimes in some of my etudes, I'll say G minor six. <laughs> and it'll be three octaves. And of course, you'll see a lot of gypsy jazzers, you know, blaze through arpeggios. Uh, but I really feel it's very important to just stay within one octave and navigate. So what I'd like to do is maybe we could warm up on minor swing. Do you all know the chord progression to minor swing? <laughs> and I don't want to assume, but I'm hoping you do. I think minor swing is ideal. Uh, let me load up the chart and pop it up on the screen. We can do a play along with it. Fake, the Django fake book, which is very important for you all to have that downloaded in in that's kind of like the fake book that people use on gigs or jam sessions. Um, of course, some people will even go to their iReal Pro app on gigs and have a, their playlist already, but then they'll often use the version from the Django fake book. It even says DF. Be. Either one of these, this is minor swing here. Um, and again, I'll probably talk about this one substitution. A minor, and I'm gonna. I'll put. I'll put the screen share on this D minor. But remember, what I always say is just kind of say the chords. A minor, kind of learn the progression. This is. Uh, this is right now is at 160. We'll 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 slow it down to 75 percent. Let me do that first before I. Actually, no. I'll, let me go ahead and screen share, and then uh, you can see. In case you don't know how to do this, um, and that was the top. Let's see. You should all see the screen, screen share, settings, playback speed. Um, I don't know if I've talked about the yet, this yet. Tritone. We'll, we'll, talk, we'll actually use that substitution. Actually, yeah, I think I did on Swing Chaton. Um, but anyways, this substitution called tritone substitution is very common and it's very beautiful in gypsy jazz. Django used it in this early version here is that you could play a dominant chord. Actually, they're just on this version, they just put B flat, not necessarily dominant, but you could basically substitute another dominant chord, a tritone away for the five. So if you have E7, the tritone sub would be B flat seven. And that means three whole tones away. It divides up the octave equally. It's six half steps, six semitones, and that's tritone sub. Why does that work? You can kind of see it in the chord shape. E7 is this. And if you put a B flat there, they share common notes. Most importantly, they share the third and the flat seven. They actually reverse. The third of the E7 is G sharp. And then the flat seven is D. On the B flat seven chord, that G sharp is now the flat seven, it's an A flat, and then the D becomes a third. So it reverses beautifully. And so it creates that same tension that we want on that dominant chord. So really you don't have to worry too much about it is what I'm saying. But I do have a lot of fun ideas to share with you as we hit some tritone. <laughs> Gypsy jazzers love that flavor, and there's a lot of fun licks, and there's a whole tone scale that we could use, and other stuff. The, the cool thing about it is that the diminished substitution trick that we talked about still applies, so you don't have to do anything. It, even if the rhythm guitar player and the bass player do the tritone sub, you can still do the diminished sub, and I'm gonna talk about that right now. Um, let's actually do face value first, and before, we put, before I put play on this, Let's review A minor. Of course, it just is A minor on the chart. Same thing with the Django fake book, but we want to play A minor six. So if you don't have that arpeggio sheet from last time, just easy arpeggios, here's A minor six. Okay. So let's 
So, um, can you all do that with me? <laughs> A minor six. Or maybe, do you, do, do you all have that arpeggio sheet from last week, the easy arpeggios? If not, I'm just gonna break it down very slowly. Uh, A is here. A, C, E, that's A minor. And then we have the sixth degree. And remember, the sixth degree is always a whole step above the fifth. Okay, that's the six. It, it's not what would be a, called a flat six. We don't want that. We just want a regular six on a minor chord. So it matches the chord that the rhythm player would be playing, which will probably be this. And we're just outlining that chord. You can, you can of course, play with the rhythm right now. Um, on the sheet, though, I, I would probably recommend this. Just for now. And then go to D minor, six. And I would probably just do it here. And you might say, hey, I want to go up here. And that would be just as fine. Okay, actually, I would recommend trying out a couple of possibilities. But this easy approach that I'm showing you is actually really nice fingering and it's staying on the top four strings. So it actually translates very beautifully to the ukulele because it, you can still have the same shapes. Of course, it'd be transposed. And then now the substitute for the E7, in this case, we're gonna stay on the, this is the four to the five chord. Here's the substitution trick. Turn that four chord, which was D minor in the key of A minor, it's a four. E7 is the five, turn the D minor to diminished. Here's what it sounds like with that E in the bass, so you could hear it. That's, that creates an E7 flat nine. And of course, that's where you can slide around every three frets, especially as you learn your, these long, these diminished arpeggios all over the fretboard. So again, the diminish is super fun. But now we have, and then back to A minor six. So I'm just kind of keeping this pattern. This maybe the first eight bars will be this, and this is what I want you to do with me. D minor. Diminish. A minor. D minor. Mm. A minor. Now for this E7, if you're wondering, hey, can I just turn that A into diminished? No, that doesn't fit the E7 chord. You wanna go down a half step from the A root, which is G sharp. That's what I was referring to as the leading tone. So it's just another way to think about it. When you have the five chord, and you know you're in the key of A minor in this case, take your root A and go down a half step to G sharp, which we just often call the leading tone, and do your dim. And then back to A minor. And again, you wanna add some rhythm to it, uh, but that's just a good exercise, just so that you can target these arpeggio notes. And of course, you, you know, this is just an exercise, but you wanna try to make music out of it. You wanna work on the face value, meaning A minor, six, D minor, six, E seven, Please do that, A minor six, D minor six. And sometimes I'm adding in those, and I think I demonstrated last week, these little chromatics. Where you're taking that A minor. You can add the trills, you know what I'm saying? Try to, um, you know, make it, fancy it up a little bit by adding some chromaticism. Add those uh, triad embellishments. D minor. And notice I just did that D minor, six. Hear the chromatic in between there. I'm still targeting, that would be like, you know, the next step, obviously, but first would be just this D minor six arpeggio. So again, you know, go at your own pace and at your own level, I think it's like, oh, I wanna fancy it up. But if I wouldn't fancy it up until you could just do this all the way through a few times and just, you know, make sure you're solid and then 
systematically add some passing tones, add back in some of those triad embellishments, add a blues lick. Mix and match. And then you can, you know, add more notes <laughs> to the arpeggio as well. So I hope that clarifies a little bit, just to give you guys a demonstration again, just take it at your own pace, of course. I think that's very important. We're at 75%, let's just give it a try. This is what I wanna to do today besides the harmonic minor scale. And again, you know, I'm kind of just um, adding in some new elements. And you can just keep it very simple and keep it very melodic, of course. Um, here we go, let's just, everybody just try it out. Two, one, two, three, four. E7, I did face value there, A minor 6, D minor 6, A minor 6, E7 face value, A minor, I'm not worried about that quick change again. Face value. I'll do face value a little bit more. A minor. Notice I'm starting on the six. That six is really sweet. E7. Chromatic. And back to A minor. Let it breathe. A minor. E7, face value. A minor. triplets just and then here's a diminish and that was D diminish a minor six D minor a minor G sharp dim and a minor keep going I'm gonna go up here Triplets, G sharp, dim, one. Little uh, embellishments. Diminish it, D diminished. A minor. think at all, you know, but um, you'll get these patterns. And diminish. A minor. Really hit that six right here. E7, face value. A minor, hit the six. D minor, hit the six, triplets. Six triplets. G sharp dim. Chromatic.
diminished coming up here. And those are those inversions, D minor inversions. A minor. Diminish. Always try to keep track D minor. Again, I'm just hoping that you turn on a song that you like. You like Dark Eyes, do the same thing on Dark Eyes, Swing Jaton, or maybe a major key song. We did exactly like you last week. Uh, but, you know, try to stay within your comfort zone as far as choosing your songs. Don't do anything too fast or too many chord changes. Um, All of Me is a great song. It's got a lot of chord changes, but it's still in that uh, two bar kind of format, if you know what I mean. And, and we could discuss that because there's actually, uh, the, the tricky thing with All of Me is the use of substitutions because it's, uh, I don't know, kind of is all over the place, but you'll get the patterns for that. So are there any questions on that at all, on what we just did?